Um, John Rentals here, Chief Political Commentator, of course, from The Independent. John, a very good morning to you. Good morning, Mike. Well, we're still here, I'm afraid. You know, every time yeah. you come on, I expect that we'll be moving on to another subject and talking about, you know, foreign policy in the Middle East or whether or not uh, David Lammy might change his mind about, you know, withholding some of those licences for some of the companies that make, you know, components for weapons. But no, we're still talking about Keir Starmer. We're still talking about donations. And he's now given some money back. Why? I uh, know. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? And he, as you say, he is, uh, he's no longer the most popular politician in Britain, <laughs> although he is still more popular than, uh, than uh, either of the likely winners of the uh, Tory leadership contest. Well, so I mean... The, the, he's got the, that to look for. The day, the day is yet young. I mean, let's face it, I mean, by the end of today, <laughs> he might not be, because, I mean, it's just quite incredible how badly run this government is. I mean, what does he think he's doing? Does he really think that he's going to kill the story by making a, a statement like this last night where he said this? Look, um, we came in as a government of change. Um, we are now going to bring forward principles for donations because until now um, politicians have used their best individual judgment on a case-by-case -case basis. I think we need some principles um, of general application. So I took the decision that until the principles uh, are in place, it was right for me to make those repayments. He's basically admitting that until this moment he didn't have any principles, isn't he? <laughs> Brilliant. I mean, uh, what's yeah, he he's thinking? Making it up. He's making it up as he goes along, I'm afraid, Mike. Uh, but well, hasn't I, he got I, any advisers I, who tell him not to do it? Well, I mean, do you want him not to repay this money? I'm delighted because I no, wrote I want him to repay. I want him to repay all of it. He should repay it. Yeah, but why uh, doesn't so he? Very but, hang on, he's been in receipt of 107,000 pounds. He's repaid six. Yeah, well, I'm not saying he should repay all of why it. Why not? I think, well, because there's an argument. There's there's an argument about the football. Uh, there's a security argument. I mean, yeah, uh, but he's repaying the football. No, he's not. Yeah, no, he is. He's... Says no, here, he's... the list is here. I've got it here. Football yeah, tickets no, at I... Arsenal, £1,000. Right? Football tickets to Tottenham, £920. That's part of the 6000 he's paying back. Is it? Yeah. I thought it was, I thought it was Taylor, Taylor Swift. It's Taylor and... Swift. It's football. Uh, it's tickets, and the races. To, tickets to Doncaster right. races. And it's also right. clothing and support for his wife, 6100 yeah. She's not going to be happy about that. He's got to keep his clothes. She has to give hers back. Well, exactly. It's, it's extraordinary. No wonder she's annoyed with him. He's invented this rule uh, that he only pays back things that, that happened after the election, since he's been in government. Yeah. He's, he's been to Taylor Swift during the election campaign. Um, so, that, that, so that's before he, was, before he was in government. Why is he paying that back? He's not paying that one back. He's, he, he, yeah, he is. He's, well, I've, got, I've no. just read you the list. No, he's paying a different, a different Taylor Swift How many ticket. times has he been to see Taylor Swift? Twice. Well, there's two, there's two lots here. There's Taylor yes. Swift tickets from Universal Music, 2,800, and then there's Taylor Swift tickets given to him by the FA, 598. Right. But, but two, of the Taylor, two of the six Taylor Swift tickets that he's repaying were offered to him and accepted by members of his family, not him. Right. So, um, hey, here's uh, an yeah, idea, John. Here's an it's idea. Brilliant. Next time, I mean, you're absolutely right. It's, it's absolute... It's, it's ridiculous. It's communications chaos. Yeah, I mean, here's... Uh, but I'm very pleased that he's accepted the principle that he should repay uh, some of the... Yeah, but, of he's, but he might have uh, accepted the principle because he's a lawyer, but the principle surely would then suggest that he gives back the rest of the money. doesn't matter whether he was in um, uh, Downing Street or not. The fact remains, if you've got a principle... Here's one for you. Why don't you just say no when somebody offers you free tickets? I, I agree. And um, or you or you go and you pay for them. Right. Also, um, like... also, if it's a principle, why is David Lammy not paying back his Tottenham Hotspur tickets at two thousand three hundred pounds? Why is Lucy Powell not paying back her Ashes tickets at six hundred pounds? And why is Joe Stevens not paying back her T Twenty tickets at the Glamorgan County Cricket Club for nine hundred fifty-seven pounds sixty? Well, I think it's I think it's fair enough for the for the Welsh secretary to support uh, support support in Wales. I think that's that, that's a reasonable thing. Yeah, she can and support I'll... it by paying for it herself. Well, that, that is also that is also true. Um, but no, I think he, I think he should he should repay it all. And uh, yeah, but I've, surely what I'm I've saying is, so. but if he's setting a principle as a, you know an honourable and moral leader, surely the other people in the cabinet should follow suit, shouldn't they? He doesn't want to tell them that though, because they might, they might, they might hate him. 
Well, everybody hates him already. I mean, I don't think he's, <laughs> I don't think he's got many friends left in the room. And what's going on with Sue Gray? We haven't heard much from her lately. Well, it's interesting. I mean, I wonder who advised uh, Keir uh, Starmer to, uh, to to pay back some of these uh, bills. Um, because uh, she used you should to be have head known. of propriety and ethics in the in the civil service, so maybe maybe she did. Well, I mean, but she's already been in receipt of it as well. She was sitting in the box with him at Tottenham. Yeah. So um, you know, the whole thing is a massive mess. It, well, it's not a massive mess. It is. A, it, it's a, it's a, it, it is a tri it's fairly trivial and it's a distraction from the important stuff, which is the, you know, the state of the NHS and uh, and the economy. But uh, uh, you're you're absolutely right. It's a communications disaster. It really is absolute n nightmare. And the point is, is that at the end of the day, Lord Ali is now in a very different position to the last time we spoke because he's now being investigated by the House of Lords, and it's also been uncovered that he's been sort of jet setting around the world visiting the Middle East and talking to people like President what? Assad and talking to people in Iraq after the Iraq war. What's all that about? Was, that was a very long time ago, Mike. I mean... Oh, sorry, you know, so that doesn't matter, then? No, it doesn't, actually. It doesn't I matter. Mean, well, what was no, he... What, 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 what can you tell me? Is the suggestion, Mike, that uh, it was Lord Ali who persuaded Ed Miliband to vote against uh, uh, those punitive uh, strikes against... That's, uh, one, that's one suggestion. It's not, my, it's not my suggestion, but certainly wow. there is a suggestion that whatever he was doing with Assad had some bearing on British policy in Syria. I don't, I don't buy it. Um, I, I th I but think you don't know, though, do you? Well, I mean... <laughs> You, you can't you can't just make stuff up and, and I'm say not making well, you, stuff can't, up. You, you can't you can't prove it's not the case. No, but I'm asking questions. I'm not making stuff up. I'm just saying what was he doing in Syria? Why was he in Syria? Did he go at the request of David Cameron? Did he go off his own bat? Does he know President Assad? I don't know. It's quite get quite a lot on, of questions. Get him on your show and ask him. Well, I'd love to, happen. but you know, people yeah. who've tried to film him in the past at Labour Party conference, which he so likes to go to, uh, get treated with the big hand in front of the face. Don't talk to me. Yes. I'm not asking well, we, any we, questions. I think we discussed that last time. Um, not, the, not the best way of dealing with it. It really isn't. And I mean, I'd be delighted to interview Lord Ali and ask him all those questions. But the point is, is it's not a very good look for Keir Starmer, who appears to be in the pocket, and I say that deliberately because of his good trousers he's wearing, um, <laughs> in the pocket of Lord Ali. Um, Lord Ali appears to be bankrolling the entire Labour Party. We now find out he gave 60,000 quid of a loan to Baroness Udin, um, who was in trouble for trying to claim some, um, some accommodation expenses that she shouldn't have claimed. That's also a very yeah. long time ago. But it gives it's you... A very long time ago and, and absolutely nothing to do with Keir Starmer or the... Or no, the I know that. But the question, the question now is, why is Keir Starmer so close to a man uh, who appears to have a bit of a dodgy past? He does not have a dodgy past, Well, Mike, he does. does he? Goodness me! I mean, well, okay, spe specify it, or, or, or you know, shut up. Well, he up. has a dodgy <laughs> past. Well, no, I'm not going to shut up. It's my show. You can shut up. Uh, the point <laughs> is that, that the bottom line is is that he's paid for an awful lot of things in the Labour Party over the course of many, many years, right? He's, yes, he's a Labour Party he's donor. He's obviously he got. The he's, Labour hang Party. on. He's obviously got access at the highest level to the Prime Minister. We've still never been given a satisfactory explanation about why he got a Downing Street pass and what he's doing with it, whether he still has it and whether he still attends meetings. We now know uh, that his house in, in Soho was used for several government meetings. We now know uh, that his penthouse was used for all sorts of things, including Keir Starmer's son's um, attempt to, to do his GCSEs. I mean, there's so many questions, John. I don't know how he can defend any of it. <laughs> well, there are only questions if you if if you ask them, Mike. So yeah, the prime minister. Well, that's what I do. I ask questions. The prime that's my minister job. stayed at a friend's house. Oh, that is not a scandal. Well, he prime says. Minister, well, hang on. He didn't. Prime no, he didn't stay, stay there. At a house. The, pre, the, the prime minister <laughs> says that he didn't spend. Uh, over, he didn't stay overnight at the penthouse ever. Oh, didn't he? Oh, that's I didn't what he know says. That. Well, that's what right, he said. Well, Okay, so he used he used the penthouse as as a convenient base in in central London for for filming. He lives in Camden. Uh, it's about a mile away. No, Kentish Town, it's impossible to get to from central London. You know that. No, the, northern line, the northern line's a disaster. Well, he's got a driver, hasn't he? No, but, I mean, Covent Come Garden, just, down, just, no, just around the corner. You must be joking, John. I mean, the fact is, he's told us, first of all, first of all, he told us that the penthouse was used by the party for a series of fundraising events. Um, various donors were invited there for various different reasons, and they raised money, which seemed to be a perfectly reasonable excuse. 
Then it turns out that he said it was used by his son for his GCSEs, which didn't explain why he had it all the way through the month of July, when basically the GCSEs weren't on anymore. And so then he then he said the reason he didn't report it and he didn't um, you know um, uh, put it down in his in his register of interest was because he never spent the night there. It's all very weird, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's not. I mean, the idea that that is somehow sinister. It's like me, right? I live just down the road from from the office here, right? I live about two miles away. You're um, not prime minister. Hang on. Mark. Yeah, but if I said or to you, look, if I said to you, look, I need to get a flat by the office because it'll be more convenient for me. You know, you'd go, well, great, but it doesn't seem very sensible. Why wouldn't you just go home? You know, why wouldn't you just go home? Well, yeah, but you're saying he didn't stay the night there anyway, so he's just using it as a convenient uh, a convenient base. Yeah, but you outside. said, first of all, that he I, stayed I, I, at a friend's house. He didn't. This Lord Ali doesn't live there either. Well, I don't... I, so you don't what? know. What do you mean, so what? I think we need... To, we, I mean, the no, people... You're, you're, I mean, so what are you actually alleging, Mike? This is this is just nonsense. I'm not Can alleging we talk anything. About something more serious. I'm not alleging anything. The point is, is that you can't talk about anything more serious because this government is mired in this ridiculous, <laughs> um, you know, spider's web of their own making, because they're so reliant on getting freebies from a guy who happens to be very wealthy who is getting something for it in return. Nobody knows what that is, but I don't believe the, the idea that, oh, just because he's already got a peerage, he's not, he's not after a peerage, so he doesn't really want anything. He must want something. He must want access to power. He must want some kind of, you know, law-making facility. I don't know, but I, I mean, until I know, I don't feel as if, you know, we can trust any of it. I think I think you're just trying to make it... You're just trying to make trouble. I mean, yes, this, has, this hasn't really been not. handled... This hasn't been handled well, um, but, you know, Wahid Ali is a Labour Party donor and supporter. He wants he wants to support the Labour government. He wanted to support the Labour government being elected. Uh, and I'm sure, yes, he enjoys um, he enjoys being uh, with with uh, powerful people and, um, you know, being a bit of a mover and shaker. But and you think that's fine? The House of Lords. That's what he that's that's what he does. And you think that's OK? I don't see what's wrong with it. Until yeah. you can explain what's wrong with it, Mike. I, I, well, until I know I, what he's doing, I can't explain what's wrong with it, but I keep asking people what he's doing. You do know what he's doing. I it's don't. All, it's all been declared. No, it hasn't. I don't know what he's doing in Downing Street. Do you? Yeah, well, I think he's um, organising a party to thank uh, uh, donors for supporting the... Organising a party. ...for election effort. Why does what's he have to what's be wrong in, with that? Why does he have to be in Downing Street to do that? Well, because they, these donors like to be... Uh, you know, in Downing Street. No, I know, um, but he doesn't have to be in Downing Street helped, planning the party. They helped does elect he? a Labour government, which they're rather pleased about. No, I get that, but he doesn't have to be m planning to make the party in Downing Street. He can make that plan surely from his house in Soho, can't he? Why does he have to be in Downing Street? <laughs> Why does it matter, Mike? Because he's at the seat because of power he's and he's not elected. And we don't I mean, know what he does. I had a, what, the one and only cabinet minister that I had here uh, just a couple of weeks ago, Jonathan Reynolds, I asked him, what role is he performing? And he said he didn't know. I said, does he still come to Downing Street? He said, yes, I think so. I said, have you ever yeah. seen him in Downing Street? He said, no. Right. So, well, yeah, so Wahid Ali is a friend and supporter of the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister is entitled to take advice from... Uh, and anybody he, he he wishes to, as long as as long as these things are, are known and declared, I can't see I can't see what the problem is. Well, it looks to me like it's he's buying his way into access. That's what it looks like. Well, yeah. It? Look, I mean, these things always always look like that because uh, because that's what they are. Well, surely. No, because I think the I think the fact is that Wahid Ali is a Labour supporter and a and a and a friend of uh, senior Labour politicians. Right. Well, let's, let, let me read you. Here's one example. He also donates money to the party. Here's one example of, of, of a whole series of, of messages that I get every single day. This one from Linda. Why is this government so secretive about everything it's doing? It is our government. And before you say, well, oh, they've declared everything, how do you explain why uh, Keir Starmer put down £16,000 worth of clothes that he got from Lord Alley as office costs? And, yeah, then, no, had, and then had to change it. Well, I think that was that was bad, and actually, he yes, he he uh, failed to declare his wife's dresses right uh, as well. And uh, you know, I mean, I think when he was elected leader of the Labour Party, actually, he uh, he failed to declare. I mean, he declared uh, Wahid Ali's donation, a hundred thousand pounds, to his leadership campaign, mm. uh, according to the rules. But 
It, the, but according to the rules, men, it wasn't actually published until after the right. after the votes were counted. And which also, I thought, and what about uh, this 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 money they've got from the hedge fund in the in the Caribbean? You know, that's not exactly on the normal Labour radar, is it? You know, what 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 you know, four million pounds just before the election given to them um, by an organisation which is involved in, I think, uh, arms sales and also, um, well, you know, climate change nonsense. Well, yeah, but <clears throat> no, but that's that's sort of anti-capitalist anti propaganda, isn't it? Any any uh, any investment fund is you you know you you can trace it. Uh, you yeah, know, but you can also you can also ask you can also ask your pensions manager to make sure that you don't invest in anything which you might consider to be unethical, and that's what yeah, most Labour uh, Party people would want. I would have thought. No, I think the problem with that donation is that although it was declared uh, under the rules, uh, it was that meant it wasn't actually declared until after the election. Exactly. I think, uh, exactly. I think that is a problem with the rules rather than yeah. with what... But the, the, other, what the, the, the bottom line, to get to the meat in, of the matter, John, because, you know, this is the trouble, is we spend so much time on this because it's it's so all-consuming. You spend a lot of time no, on it, because it's all-consuming. You, you don't can't have to it. talk about all this stuff. Well, you there isn't anything else. They're not, doing anything, they're not doing anything else that we can talk well, about. they are. They're trying, to, they're trying to turn the health service around. We could oh, talk how's about, that going? It's treating is a very... How much time can we... Well, they're going to spend a lot of time getting more pensioners into the health service because they're all going to be freezing themselves to death because they won't be getting a winter health allowance. But but the point about all of this, surely, in the end, is that Keir Starmer is completely and utterly, it seems to me, unaware of how he is now being seen. He doesn't seem yeah. to realise that the people are not buying any of this stuff and they really need to be taught uh, how to deal and how to speak to the public because they're not doing it right. Well, I think he's beginning to realise it, which is why he's paid back the uh, the six thousand. Because I think he's he's realised that uh, it's too late now, isn't it? The problem. The damage but, is already done. But the danger with that, of course, is that he keeps it going as a as a news story for uh, for for another for another few. Well, I days. bet you, I bet you, this time next week we'll be talking still about this because I think they've still got a long way to run because there's going to be more stuff coming out every single day because it is. Yeah. Well, I'll I'll come on your show and we can talk about the health service, perhaps, Mike. Well, let me tell you, when you come on the show next week and talk about the health service, you'll be able to fill me with glee about all of the improvements they've made to it. Last, <laughs> you know, last story I did about the health service was a guy uh, who went to his GPs um, to re-register after having had cancer, and they said, well, sorry, we can't register you because it says here you're dead. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's what we're dealing with. Anyway, John, good to see you. Thank you very much indeed.